let's say that you're doing your pre-calculus or Algebra 2 homework and you're asked to solve this equation cosine of 2x plus 3 cosine of x plus 2 is equal to 0. And let's say while you're doing this you have access to a sheet of trigonometric identities and you start searching through it and you are looking for one that might be helpful for solving this. And let's say that you happen upon the double angle formulas and let's say that you decide to utilize these because the most conspicuous thing about this seems to be the 2x. I mean obviously we have to do something with this, right? We have to rearrange it somehow. I mean trying to isolate cosines like, I don't know, cosine of 2x plus 3 cosine of x equals negative 2. It's, like, eh, eh, it's not helpful. We gotta simplify this somehow, okay? So let's say we know that we're supposed to use an, an identity of some kind and let's say we try to use cosine of 2 theta because what we have here is cosine of 2x. Of course x is the same as theta. So let's say we did that. If we did that, let's say we tried a few things but eventually happened upon this one. All right, cosine of 2 theta minus 1. So let's say we tried to replace cosine of 2x with just that. 2 cosine squared of x minus 1 plus 3 cosine of x plus 2 is equal to 0. And you might be wondering if this looks any better at all. Believe me, it does. Let me simplify this a little bit. 2 cosine squared of x. Let's say I combine those two numbers. Um, we'll do it on the other side. So 2 cosine squared of x plus 3 cosine of x plus 1 is equal to 0. Totally equivalent. And what you might have noticed at this time, or at, at this point, or at least what I'd like to point out to you, what you should be looking for in these kinds of equations, is thing squared plus thing plus constant. Say you were to make the substitution that says, I don't know, k is equal to cosine of x. If that were the case, then you'd be allowed to say 2k squared plus 3k plus 1 is equal to 0. And you've all of a sudden got this beautiful polynomial that you know how to solve. It's a quadratic equation. So let's say I go ahead and use the quadratic formula on this. And let's say you arrive at the conclusion that the solutions to that quadratic equation are negative one-half and negative one. So, k is equal to negative one-half or it's equal to negative one. But remember what k was, right? k was equal to cosine of x. What we've got here is the cosine of x is equal to, on the one hand, negative one-half. On the other hand, negative one which means our job in solving this equation is to figure out, of course, the inverse cosine of negative one-half because that would give us x and the inverse cosine of negative one. That would give us the angle whose cosines are negative one-half and negative one. So at this point, we have another kind of problem. We've gotten past that, but now we're really into the trigonometry. So this is something that you can put into your calculator fairly easily. Make sure you're in radians mode. But let's say it's one of those courses where they want you to do it by hand. They want you to get the exact result, which means no approximations, no calculator answers. Of course, more often than not, the answers to these sort of things are irrational numbers. So what I often tell my students is that what you want to know how to do in this situation is draw one quarter and exactly one quarter of our friend the unit circle. Yeah, that's starting to look a little bit like an oval. Let me try again. In fact, let me just do this. Just put a beautiful circle in like that. Lovely. And what I usually say is we got to know about one quarter of this thing. I have to know about what goes on at 30 degrees, which is pi over 6, 
radians, and how 30 degrees leads me to the point rad 3 over 2, 1 half on the unit circle, on this, on this quadrant of the unit circle. I also have to know about how 45 degrees, which is pi over 4, leads me to the coordinate rad 2 over 2, rad 2 over 2. And I have to know about 60 degrees, which is pi over 3, and how that leads me to the point uh, 1 half, comma, rad 3 over 2. And I'm interested in figuring out, let's say, this first one. Let's say we're interested in figuring out the angle whose cosine is negative 1 half. Well, by that I need a triangle on the unit circle with an adjacent of negative 1 half, because remember how the cosine of an angle is always equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. Now check out this triangle right here. What we need to be talking about is something that resembles a 60 degree angle on the unit circle. Because according to these points, okay, the length of this side, the x-axis, has a value of 1 half. Of course this has a value of rad 3 over 2, but what's important is, in addition is that the hypotenuse is 1. Adjacent over hypotenuse is 1 half over 1. So the inverse cosine of 60 degrees, or pi over 3, is 1 half over 1. Of course, we were asked for negative 1 half. Well, if you transpose this circle into this quadrant, what you're going to have to do to get to this point, which is now negative 1 half, rad 3 over 2, is of course travel in the negative direction. Uh, 1 half a unit, and the hypotenuse is still equal to 1. So what this tells us is that this angle here, which is 60 degrees less than 180, which is 120 degrees, is definitely a solution to this equation here. But there's another one. So you can draw another triangle that has the same cosine. You can make it go down, right? If you make it go down, then you're going to have the point negative 1 half negative rad 3 over 2, and that's something else that has to do with sine, but this angle here gives us the same result for the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is always going to be 1 because of the Pythagorean theorem. And this is 60 degrees more than 180, which is 240 degrees. Let me quickly convert these to radians, because that's probably what they want the answer in. Right, 120 degrees times pi radians in 180 degrees, that's the conversion factor. It's going to work out to 120 over 180 pi radians. It's going to work out to 2 -third radians, 2 -third pi radians. All right, that's one of them. The other one is 240 degrees. And for that, we're just going to get 240 over 180 pi radians. In other words, 4 thirds pi radians. That's another one of the solutions. But on the domain that we talked about, okay, between 0 and 2 pi, in other words, on one turn around this circle, that is the only times that this occurs, okay? You could go around the circle multiple times, so um, multiplicities of 2 thirds pi and 4 thirds pi, certain ones will also give you the same cosines, but on the domain we talked about, of course, we are done. And now what we're going to do is talk about the inverse cosine of negative 1. So in order to get an inverse cosine of negative 1, we're going to need to have an adjacent angle, or adjacent side, rather, of negative 1. And if I look at the part of the unit circle that I've memorized, one way I could get a cosine of something similar, say a cosine of 1, is I could imagine a really, really small angle here, right? Actually, an angle of 0, but just for example's sake, a really, really tiny one. And as you can see, the adjacent angle here would be 1, and the hypotenuse would be 1, as it always is. Close, what I need is negative 1, so simple. All I'm going to do is transpose this, this triangle over here, 
where in this case I'd have to travel to the left on the x-axis to get my negative one, my hypotenuse would be positive one still, because it always is, because the Pythagorean theorem cannot give negative answers. And I can see that what I need to do here is 180 degrees. So 180 degrees, which hopefully we are aware, just based on this conversion factor alone, is pi radians, is the third and final answer to these two equations on the domain 0 2 pi.